स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया let us now uh, let us now go back to our example one so and we would like to see how to solve the same example for where for which we did not even get the extremal so i am talking about the example uh, the example that we discussed right in the first slide with the extremal given as follows right so my function f is y square 1 minus y prime square so in example one my f of my f of y comma y prime is y square 1 minus y y prime square and we saw that so in this case this case my p which is partial f partial y prime will be equal to negative 2 y prime square well negative 2 y square uh, 1 minus y prime and my hamiltonian h is y square 1 minus y prime square right ok so using using my beltrami identity using beltrami identity i see that i get two i get two equations either y is equal to 0 or y is equal to x plus a we have seen that in our uh, in the discussion of the solution to this example we are right now assuming one of the results x is equal to plus x plus a right so well of course these are all these are all valid solutions valid solutions to my euler lagrange equations right now but they do not simultaneously neither of them simultaneously satisfied the boundary condition my boundary condition was recall that my boundary condition was y of minus 1 is 0 and my y of 1 is 1 right ok so then so now we are going to look for uh, so so uh, so what have we got so let me call this as my solution a and call this as my solution b right now notice that if we find my momentum and hamiltonian for both for both a and b right we can show that the the momentum and the hamiltonian both are zero right so for both the solutions the momentum and the hamiltonian are uh, zero so which means that which means that we do not have to worry about the weierstrass erdman conditions because they are satisfied from the left and from the right they are satisfied trivially they are satisfied trivially right so what have we got here we have got the following so now we have two functions so note that y the solution a y is identically zero satisfies the left boundary condition the left boundary condition that is y at minus 1 equal to 0 satisfies this boundary condition right and my solution y equal to x plus a satisfies the boundary condition y at 1 is equal to 1 uh, provided a is equal to 0 so my uh, so my uh, extremal in this case is y is equal to x right so so let us draw the figure so we have the rectangular hyperbola this is my first boundary point and my second boundary point is 1 comma 1 so we have two solutions one is y identically 0 the other is y equal to x right and these we have to construct a broken extremal such that the extremal joins the two points under consideration now note that so for so let let me call this as my solution from the left or so my broken extremal is such that my solution from the left is y1 which is this and solution from the right y2 is is x 
is uh, well y 2 will be this one y is equal to x right. Now, my my continuity condition of the broken extremals will give me that y 1 at x star will be equal to y 2 at x star. So, there at x star the, the corner point the solutions must match. So, I get that 0 is equal to uh, x star from here right or the solutions match at at 0. So, so my extremal is as follows from minus 1 to 0 we have y 1. So, from this point to this point we have y 1 this solution and from from 0 comma 0 to 1 comma 1 we have y 2. So, this is my so my broken extremal y my broken extremal extremal y is 0 when x is from minus 1 to 0 and it is x when x is from 0 to 1 right. So, this is my broken extremal solution to this problem right. So, we have at least found an extremal which satisfies the Euler Lagrange equation and also the Weierstrass Hermann condition. So, now how uh, let me just summarize our discussion in this uh, in this topic by saying that how to find these class of broken extremals. So, the general strategy is the following we solve Euler Lagrange we solve our Euler Lagrange equation we look for we look for solutions uh, satisfying satisfying the boundary conditions right those solutions could be different from each other and then for different solutions we match we match the solution at corner points at corner point let us say there is just one corner point x star. So, we we match it by y 1 of x star is equal to y 2 at x star and then we also satisfy the Weierstrass Erdmann condition and finally, we allow we allow the problem in general can allow for more than one corner point for more for more than one corners right ok. So, now let us look at a very interesting example in this family of broken extremal namely the example of finding the extremal for the Newton's aerodynamic problem ok. The example I want to discuss is regarding Newton's aerodynamic problem right. So, what exactly is this problem? Now, physically we have seen when we drive cars, we have seen that the cars are designed in such a way that their front shape almost 90 percent of the design is such that the front shape of the car is all slanted right. And also when we see look at uh, some of the other vehicles which move through the air like the aircraft like the rocket, we will see that almost all of these vehicles they have a slanted body at the front and that is because uh, so as to reduce the frictional drag or the resistance of the air right. So, we are in this lecture we are going to derive the shape of these objects which move through the air right uh, by looking at the frictional drag which acts on the surface of these moving objects. So, the Newton's aerodynamic problem says to find the optimal the optimal shape let us say of rocket's nose. So, this is just one object uh, rocket's nose cone which creates least air resistance least air resistance right passing through the air passing through the air ok. So, assumptions in this problem assume we have couple of assumptions first air is thin air is thin which means that we have perfectly which which means that we have perfectly elastic particles 
we will see what is the implication of these assumptions perfectly elastic uh, elastic particles especially when we have the collision of the air particles with the object which is moving through the air the collision is perfectly elastic so then another assumption is that the particles bounce with equal speed particles when they move the air particles bounce through the surface with equal speed equal equal speed and we ignore we ignore the tangential friction and then we also uh, we also ignore non newtonian effects we also ignore uh, non newtonian effects like the compression of air rarefaction of air and so on right non newtonian effects like compression of air right okay so then with this assumption uh, this assumption is not uh, uh, with this assumption we have not read, uh, simplified x uh, you know too much this assumption still holds for problems where the object is moving in a very thin atmosphere so realistic cases under this assumption follows objects moving through thin atmosphere like uh, high altitude motion uh, where rockets move so motion so realistic at high altitude altitude where and with supersonic supersonic air speed air speed typically of the order of mach number uh, 5 to 10 right uh, so again uh, typically of of the order of the speed where the rockets move so then i have further assumptions in order to set up the problem uh, so further assumptions we assume that note that when when the rocket moves it also rotates about its vertical axis right to provide stability the rocket while moves up through the air it rotates which means that the shape will be such that it is symmetric about this length axis right so as a, so as the rocket the rocket rotates along rotates along its length its length uh, it implies that the cone is circularly circularly symmetric right the cone is circularly symmetric we reduce the problem to determine the just the the profile of the nose cone so reduce reduce problem to determine to determine uh, optimal shape of nose cone the rest of the body we don't care because that will be more or less cylindrically uh, will be cylinder right okay so then another observation is that the cone is such that it has a radius it has a radius r at its base so i'm just specifying some dimensions of the object and and length l right so which means that at the base the radius of the cone is r and the length of the cone is taken to be capital l right so that will give us the boundary conditions and also uh, we also assume that the shape of this cone is convex right or uh, or it means that the interior angle the interior angle of this object is let's say we draw the interior angle this angle is less than this angle phi that i am saying it is less than 180 the interior angle phi is less than 180 degrees and finally uh, we also have that the profile 
the profile of the cone must be non increasing must be non increasing so what i mean to say is that when we find out the slope of the shape the slope of the shape is negative right and that follows from assumption 7 that the shape is convex okay so with this i am ready to set up the problem now suppose let us let us draw this figure so i am talking about uh, let me draw half the figure here so uh, this is my x axis this is my y axis and let us say this is my length l of the cone and this is my uh, base radius r and from here let me let me take any point which has which has a radius x and also let me draw the tangent to this point right so the tangent to the point and uh, let me let me do some geometry here so this is the horizontal and my vertical is as follows uh, and also let us say if i have an air particle which is hitting the surface of the cone let us say it makes an angle theta then by geometry i have that this angle is also theta but it it bounces off with the same angle so this is also theta right so if this is my v then this will be also my v right so i'm just using all the assumptions that i have just stated in the problem okay so i'm ready so let us say the component of v along this direction is s okay so i'm ready to uh, to write down the functional so note that so first of all it is irrelevant irrelevant whether we move the object or the medium right we can keep the object fixed medium moving or medium fixed object moving to look at the problem so we assume we assume the latter that the medium is moving right assume latter so then also we have to figure out what is the tangent to the surface the tangent the tangent to the surface is y prime right so y prime will be uh, the tangent to the surface is the tangent with respect to the vertical angle right so so y prime is equal to this this uh, th the way it is constructed is tan phi or this is tan tan 90 minus theta right and this is also equal to uh, uh, it is also equal to cot theta well let me call this tangent uh, let me let me say that the tangent has a negative sign because it's a decreasing slope so what i get is uh, is that is uh, cot theta is equal to negative y prime so that is what i wanted to say and then since my angle of incidence angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection that is this theta is equal to this theta right and this is because of perfectly elastic collision uh, this means that the angle between the reflected particle and the vertical so it implies that the angle between reflected particle particle and the vertical 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 is 2 theta the angle between the reflected particle and the vertical is 2 theta and uh, we can see that also from the diagram the velocity the velocity component the velocity component along the vertical along the vertical is s right and we can see that s which is also equal to v cos 2 theta by the construction here right or this is also equal to v 1 minus 2 sin square theta right so which means which means that the change the change in the velocity the change in the velocity is 
the initial velocity minus the final velocity and I get that this is also equal to 2 v sin square theta, 2 v sin square theta. Okay, so, so which means we can write down the total force or the frictional drag which is acting on the surface. So, the total resistance force resistance force and this will be per particle per particle per unit area right so the total force is mass times acceleration newton second law and that is equal to mass times the change in velocity which is 2v cos well 2v sin square theta right so that is my net force and so this is also equal to 2 mv 1 by 1 plus cot square theta which is also equal to 2 mv by 1 plus y prime square that is how we have defined cot square theta. Okay, so then, then notice again the figure, well notice again the figure that uh, that we have a lateral surface area. So, we have to figure out the total force. The total force will be force per unit area that we have unit length that we have just found times the integration over the length. So, along let us say one element d y, d y has a perimeter. So, the perimeter or the lateral surface area along the element d y is 2 pi x. This is a circle of radius x, right. So, which means my lateral, my lateral surface area, surface area at radius x, radius x is 2 pi x times dy, right. So, 2 pi x dy, which means, which means my total force, my total force uh, will be will be the sum over the will be the integral of this force per unit uh, per unit particle per unit area times the total area. So, f of y is given to be uh, integral from 0 to l well y is from 0 to l 2 pi x dy times 2 m v by 1 plus y prime square right. So, coming from this and this respectively. Okay, so, I can club everything together, I get 2 pi times uh, 2 m v, these are all constants, integral 0 to l x dy divided by 1 plus y prime square. Now, let us, let us take this constant to be just 1 without loss of generality, because they are not going to determine, these constants are not going to determine the optimal shape. So, we have to optimize this particular functional, right. So, so let me call this quantity here which I have circled as my integrand f. So, we need to write down to find the optimal shape, we need to write down the Euler Lagrange equation for the integrand f of x comma y prime which is x by 1 plus y prime square, right. So, when we do that, when we do that we have d d x of partial f partial y prime minus partial f partial y, there is no function of y in f this is set equal to 0 and I get that from here I get that x well I get that x y prime well 2 yeah so 2 x y prime 1 plus y prime square uh, y prime square whole square is equal to a constant c 1. I have integrated once with respect to x. So, this is my equation that I have to solve to find the extremal shape, right. To solve that, let us now, so what I have is the following. So, this means that my x is c 1 by 2 times 1 plus y prime square. So, it was y prime square, yes, whole square uh, by y prime, right. Okay. So, let us now introduce new set of constants. So, let me say that c, my constant c is c 1 by 2 and my, my function u is negative y prime, right. 
from here what I see is x is c times 1 plus u square whole square. I just substituted these new functions and new constants and let me open it up. I get that this is also equal to 1 plus, well I get this, this whole square divided by u as well. So, divided by u and this can be simplified to see that this is u cube plus 2 u, u cube plus 2 u plus 1 by u, right. And uh, so, so x is, so this is x in the form in terms of the parameter u. Similarly, I can write my variable, my coordinate variable y as a parameter of, as a function of u. So, note that y prime which is dy dx, which is also equal to dy du times dx, well we want to find dy du, right. So, dy du is dy dx times dx du or this is also equal to y prime times, uh, times x prime of u, but y prime is negative u right and we an x prime u can be found from this relation. I see that this is also equal to c times 1 by u minus 3 u square cube minus 2 u and then from here I can integrate, integrate to get y as a function of u uh, which is d plus c times log u minus 3 by 4 u uh, minus u square, right. And I can write down x of u, which we have found earlier as c times u cube plus 2u plus 1 by u. So, this is my parametric representation of the extremal uh, for both the components x and y. Let me call this solution as a. Now, notice that, notice that u is, u is negative y prime and since y prime is decreasing, this will always be positive. So, from here, from here and uh, from this condition, I can immediately deduce that x of u will always be positive, the way u is chosen, right. So, so which means, which means that x equal to 0 cannot be a solution, cannot be a solution, a solution to my Euler-Lagrange equation, right if we were to draw again the shape of the cone, right. So, the cone has length l and the total length along. So, if we were to draw the shape of the cone, the cone will be such that the profile never hits x equal to 0, right, which means that, uh, which means that the, the profile given by a will be such that it will never hit the y axis. So, which means we can take two profiles one as y1, the other as y2, right. And the profiles they match at let us say a corner point x star and let me call this as x of u1, we need to find u1 and this is, this is uh, x equal to r which is at x at u2, some other parameter u2, right, okay. So, so what is the conclusion so far? The conclusion is, since x equal to 0 is not a solution, it implies we use, we use the idea of broken extremals to find out the solutions, right, to, to find y1 and y2. Let me again draw the figure. So, we have y1, let us say of this profile and y2 of this profile and they match at the point x star. and this is x at u2 which is equal to r and this is x star which is also at x at u1, right. So, so what, what have we got? We have broken extremals y1 and y2 such that notice that this length is l such that y1 at 0 at x equal to 0 is l and y1 at x star at x star is equal to y2 at x star and uh, we also have y2 
y2 at x equal to r is equal to 0, right. So, we can we can take the profile as follows, we can take y1 to be the flat profile, we can take y1 to be well, we can take y1 to be the flat profile, right, that is y prime is equal to 0 and uh, the reasoning for taking a profile like this is note that y prime, y prime the way we have made our assumptions that y prime has to be non increasing, right. So, if y prime is not negative, it cannot be positive, it can only be 0, that is what we are left with. Uh, so, that the shape is a convex shape, right. So, for convex shape, okay. And then we can take y2 to be the profile, the profile given, given by my Euler Lagrange solution A, right, or this is arrived from uh, the Euler Lagrange equation, right, okay. So, then, uh, so what have we got? So, at x star, note that at x star, the point of continuity, we also should satisfy the Weierstrass Erdmann conditions. So, at x star, Weierstrass Erdmann con corner conditions, corner conditions must be satisfied, right. So, which means that h of x star at x star minus must be h of x star, x star at plus, right. From the left must be equal to the right, where my h is this Hamiltonian function y prime del f del y prime minus f, right, okay. So, this question is what is this h? So, notice that uh, h when, so my f is the following function, uh, recall in this aerodynamic problem my f is, uh, is the following, it is also equal to x plus x by 1 plus y prime square, right. So, when we plug this, we get my h function to be negative x by 1 plus y prime square whole square times 3 y prime square plus 1, right. So, which means, which means that h of u, in terms of u, I get that this is also equal to minus x times 3 u square plus 1 divided by 1 plus u square whole square, right. So, now h of u at x star minus, so at, so from the left we have the profile has horiz is horizontal. So, we can plug that, we can plug that, the, so what have we got at x star minus from the left I have the profile is flat, right or my u is 0 which means that h from the left is nothing but, uh, is nothing but x by 1 plus u square whole square by 3 u square plus 1, I plug in u equal to 0, I get this is also equal to x star, right. So, this is x star minus. Now, at x star plus, we have the full profile, so y prime is not 0. So, I get that h at x star plus is minus x star 3 u square plus 1 by 1 plus u square whole square. So, I equate these two, I equate these two quantities, right. So, to see that, so which means that h at minus will be h at plus at the corner condition x equal to x star and I see that my solution that I get is 3 u square plus 1 by 1 plus u square whole square and this is equal to 1, right. So, from here I can solve for u, I get u equal to 0 and plus minus 1, right, u is equal to 0 or plus minus 1, okay. So, now this question is what is the value of u? I know that u is positive because the profile is non-increasing because u is minus y prime, right and this must be positive. So, we take, 
we take my u to be 1. So, this is this is my value of u 1. So, my x star is x of u 1 u 1 and then we plug the value of u 1 to find what is x star and that will be my corner point. So, finally, we have so notice how many conditions we have in the problem, how many constants we have constants like d, constants like c, constants like u 1, u 1 here and constants like u 2 right. So, so what have we got? We have four unknowns, four unknowns right we have u 1 u 2 c and d and we have four equations we have four equations given by y of 1 is l x of u 2 uh, well so this is y of u 1 is l x of u 2 is equal to r and and uh, well, uh, what what else? Y of u two is equal to zero. Well, I already know what is u one. U one is one. So we have three conditions. So we have three conditions, three unknowns, and three equations. And hence, the system is fully determinable, right? I want to end the discussion on this topic by mentioning that what have we got? The shape that we have got of the cone profile is a profile of the following. We have got a shape like the following where it is flat, flat at the top, right. So, the shape is like, like, so the shape is like a frustrum of a cone, frustrum of a cone or the shape of a cone which is in between two parallel plates, right. This is also the, the famous shape of Emmy plates this sort of a profile is also known as emi plates which is commonly found in commonly found in uh, bullets which also move in the limit of uh, high mach number range 